welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to check out the latest version of the Caden Live free video editor. This will of course include highlighting some key new features, but before that we're going to look at installation and system requirements and also have an overview of Caden Live workflow. So let's go and get started. Right, here we are on the Caden Live website where version 24.02.0 was released on the 11th of March 2024. New versions are published very regularly, with the latest update to version 23 only published on the 19th of February, and indeed version 24 was updated to version 24.02.1 just 17 days after launch when we got a load of bug fixes. However, it was the move to version 24 that was a very substantial upgrade with a lot of under the hood changes. These included the adoption of Qt6 and KDE Framework 6, or in other words, new versions of the underlying software technology, as well as improved Wayland support for Linux users and performance improvements for Windows, Mac and Linux, as Caden Live now runs natively on DirectX, Metal and Vulkan on these respective platforms. If you're wondering about system requirements, these are modest, with Caden Live being an excellent choice of video editor for less powerful hardware, including most laptops, as it doesn't need a separate graphics card and can be configured to run acceptably on any computer with 4GB of RAM or more. Although, as we can see on this page in the manual, the published minimum system requirements are at least one 2GHz CPU core and 4GB of RAM for standard definition, writing to four cores with 8GB of RAM for HD. Although it is possible to edit HD video in Caden Live with a 4GB computer, and I'll talk about how you do that later in the video. If we go back to the home page, here we are. As you can see, we can donate to the project, or we can click on download and we'll uh, do that. There we are. And as you can see, we can now download for Windows, for Linux, or for either ARM or Intel-based Macs. And in the remainder of this video, we're going to be using Caden Live installed in Linux. Although I do want to point out the standalone Windows version. So if you want, you can install Caden Live in Windows, but you can also use this standalone version. I just thought I'd show you that. Let's just click on that and I download the file. We're actually downloading it to a USB drive, a very fast SanDisk Extreme Pro USB drive that's plugged into this computer. And if we go across to that drive and just double click to uh, extract the uh, archive, there we go, we'll extract it also to the USB drive. So what we now have is a USB drive with Caden Live on it, not installed, just the files. And if we navigate to the binaries folder like that and scroll down and we click on the Caden Live XC like that, there we go. We're now running up Caden Live on my Windows laptop, running from a USB drive. And I sometimes find it a very handy indeed to be able to carry around a video editor on a removable media that I can plug into just about any computer. And of course, the standalone version also means that you can try out Caden Live 24 in Windows without any kind of installation. Greetings. Here I am back again running a Linux distro, specifically KDE Neon, which is created by the same KDE community that publishes Caden Live. And earlier, I went into the Discover Software Center and installed Caden Live 24. So if we go down to the menu here and we go to multimedia, we can run up Caden Live. And we're doing so on a J4105 test system, quite a low end piece of hardware that just meets the specs for HD editing in Caden Live. And I particularly wanted to use lower end hardware to test out Caden Live 24, because in my view, if you've got a higher end system and you want a free video editor, you're more likely to pick something like DaVinci Resolve. As we can see, we get a very traditional video editor layout in Caden Live. That's one of the reasons I really like it. And we also have a range of layouts available. We can go here to, for example, the logging layout, like that for logging footage, the audio editing layout like that, the effects layout, the color correction layout, but we'll stick with the editing layout for now. And indeed, if you're new to Caden Live, I suggest you stick with the editing layout as you first learn the package. 
as we can see at the top of the screen, by default it's created a 1080p 25 frames a second project, but we could change that if we wanted to. We could go to project and to project settings and select uh, lots of different uh, project settings, but for now we'll go with the defaults and I think bring in some test footage. So if we go up here on the left at the top and click, we can add clip or folder like that. And I've got four test clips here in my video folder. Let's bring those in like that. And uh, there they are, it'll sort them all out. Oh look, we've got boats on the beach. That's very exciting. And down here, we've got me on the beach. Even more exciting, when I click on the clip, it brings it into the clip monitor, where we can play it by pressing the play button there like that. I think in a second, I'm gonna say something very exciting to camera. What's it gonna be? Go on, Chris, say something. So, here I am on a beach in North Wales. There we are, I have a stop playback with the button there, but we can start and stop playback as in most video editors using the spacebar. I press the spacebar, playback will start again. Specifically, I'm in a... And I can press it again to stop playback. If I take my mouse up here, we can see the audio. Well, we can see that probably we want to start the clip about there. And I can set an in point down here, pressing on the in point like that in zone. And we can now drag the clip down to the timeline where we've got the start of an edit. And this footage will now appear in the uh, monitor up here. We just play up here. You'll see, there we are. This is so, the project monitor. Here I am on a beach in North Wales. Sp there we are. That seems to be working okay. Let's find a point to bring in another clip. Specifically, I'm in the Colwyn Bay. You can see the, the sea out there, the waves. Waves is a good point, isn't it? Uh. Waves. Waves is about there. Let's just zoom in a bit on that. We can click down here to go in on the timeline. And I'm going to press G to give ourselves a marker like that. Markers are very handy in video editing. And uh, let's at that point cut to, for example, waves on sound, this clip here. We'll pull that down there, drop that onto the timeline. And hopefully if I've got it right. To the, the sea out there, the waves coming in, there's even some wind turbines a bit further out to sea. That's working pretty well, but I don't think we need the extra audio here. So I'll click on this clip, right click. We can do all sorts of things here, but here I'm going to ungroup clips, which will disconnect audio and video, they're now separate. And I can now delete the unneeded audio. Just press delete on the keyboard, that audio goes away. And let's also finish that clip around there. Let's just zoom out a bit to see the end. Let's just pull that along, something like that. Go back in again, which is all just very rough to show you what's going on and we'll have a nice long dissolve on the end of a clip. So let's just uh, play this. There, the waves coming in, there's even some wind turbines a bit further out to sea. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you about what's coming up here on Explaining Computers here on YouTube. And I think we'll finish things around there. Let's go to the cut tool there, cut off the end of this like that, and select that end of clip, get rid of that clip like that. And there we are, we've created a simple edit. And you might have noticed during the dissolve, the playback wasn't perfect. Let's just show you that again. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you about what's coming up. Yes, that wasn't a perfect dissolve in terms of preview, but I'll show you how to fix that in the next segment of the video. But for now, we'll stick with this uh, test edit. We'll go up to project and we'll go to render to uh, render out the project. And I'll just make this a bit bigger on the screen so you can see things a bit more clearly. Here I've got things set with more options ticked. If you take that off, you have a fewer options. I always like to see uh, everything going on. Although, to be honest, you haven't got to change a lot here as you're getting used to Caden Live. The defaults are pretty good. Here it's defaulted to outputting video in MP4 container with an H.264 video codec and AAC audio codec. And if you want to know all about containers and codecs, there's an Explaining Computers episode all about video formats, codecs, and containers. Anyway, for now, we're going to render out our clip, but in fact, I haven't given it a name, have I? So what I'm going to do is to come out of this. I should have got this right, shouldn't I? Never mind. Well, first of all, save our file as something. We'll give it a name. Let's call it a test edit like that. That'll do. And if we now go back into project and render, it's going to use the name test edit to render this out to my videos folder, as you can see like that. We could have edited up there, but it's always a good idea to give a name to your project. And so if we now click on the render to file like that, it'll start rendering out our video. So let's just speed on through. And there we are, it's finished. So I'll just uh, close this down like that. 
and we'll go to the uh, Dolphin File Manager and go to uh, Videos. Let's go home and to Videos like that. And there is the file we've just created. So let's play the file. So here I am on a beach in North Wales. Specifically, I'm in a Colwyn Bay. You can see the, the sea out there, the waves coming in, there's even some wind turbines a bit further out to sea. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you about what's coming up here on X. And as we can see, that all worked just fine. I've demonstrated the basic workflow for editing in Caden Live. Now, as we saw a few minutes ago, on lower end hardware, timeline playback in Caden Live is inevitably not smooth in more complex parts of the edit. And to remind us of this, let's just disable the audio over there because I don't want to be talking over myself as I keep replaying this clip. And if I do play the clip and we get to the mix, we can see we don't get smooth playback. However, all is not lost because Caden Live offers three tools to improve timeline performance on lower end hardware. And the first is to change the preview resolution, which we can do for either the clip or the project monitor. Here we'll go for the project monitor. And if we go down here and use this drop down, you can see we can change from one to one, which means it's playing back here to 1080p footage, all the way down to a 360p, even 270p. And if we change, for example, to 360p, that means this monitor is now 360p rather than a, a 1080p scaled down. And if we now play this back, things should play a little bit better, not perfectly better. So that's one possible solution. It's not quite working for us here. And of course, if we actually maximize that monitor, you can see now, at least if you're watching HD, that we no longer have a HD playback on that particular monitor. So this is one possible solution. It's not one I use very often, but in some circumstances, it might work. Secondly, we can improve performance on lower end hardware or indeed on higher end hardware when doing very complicated edits by using what's called timeline preview. And what this does is to render all or part of a timeline to achieve smooth playback. So if we go to timeline and timeline preview, you can see we can turn it on or off or we could add a preview zone if we don't want to render the entire timeline to improve playback. And to do that, what we need to do is to take the selection zone. This is the selection zone. We can move it around, as you can see. We can also uh, extend it or contract it by going in there. A bit fiddly, but it does work. But uh, let's here just move it across our transition here, which is causing us the trouble. We can make it a bit smaller. Well, let's do it like that. And if we now go to Timeline, Timeline Preview, and uh, Add Preview Zone, you see we get a little uh, red section added in there. And if we now go to Timeline, Timeline Preview, Start Preview Render, you will see it's starting to render a preview down there. So uh, we'll just speed on through until that's completed. And there we are, it has. And if we now play back this edit, surprise, surprise, we're going to get a very, very smooth transition. There we are, because we're using a timeline preview. However, you might not want to do this, and there is yet another option. So let's first of all, just get rid of what we just done. We'll go to timeline preview and uh, remove all preview zones like that timeline preview and uh, we will stop it so it's not uh, doing anything here because the final thing we can do is to use what are called proxy clips. And what this does is to create lower quality versions of our video footage that are used for timeline playback, although the original footage is still used to render the final film. And the way to do this is to go to project up here and to project settings and to go to proxy and we can enable here proxy clips like that, which will generate proxy clips of videos beyond a certain size. We'll just make sure there it's going to go beyond a thousand pixels. So 1080p footage will certainly have a proxy created because it's 1920 pixels wide. That's uh, OK. And as we can now see proxies are being created, there's little lines under our footage. Let's just let these continue. There we go. All clips are now proxy clips. Some were proxy clips very quickly because I've been experimenting before recording this part of the video. But uh, the good thing now is if we now go back to our edit and play again, once again, we should get a nice smooth transition because here we're using proxy clips. And it's worth pointing out if you do want to use proxy clips, the easiest way to do it is go to settings and to configure Caden Live and go down to a proxy clips, as you can see, and enable proxy clips for all new projects and OK. And if you do that, you haven't got to think about all this. All of your new projects will automatically use proxy clips will automatically be generated and you'll be able to get good timeline performance even on modest hardware.
So, now that we've had a decent look at Caden Live operation, let's turn to what's new in version 24. As noted earlier, a lot of the improvements are underlying technology changes that improve performance and stability, as well as providing a more robust foundation for the future. However, there are also some specific additions and new features, such as support for multiple subtitles. And if we go across to the clip monitor, you can see at the top we now have a drop down, which allows us to select the most recently selected clips, such as, for example, lots of ducks. It's always nice to select lots of ducks. This said, far more importantly, we finally in Caden Live 24 got the implementation of easing interpolation modes for keyframes. And if you're wondering what that means, it means if we add keyframes to effects, we can add more, more interpolation modes. And there's lots and lots of effects here in a Caden Live, loads and loads of effects under loads and loads of categories under stylized, for example, lots and lots of things. And we can take any of these effects and drag them down to a clip, or we can use the uh, favorites button here, more useful most of the time. So for example, we could take transform and drag that down to the, the stag deer clip. And we now select that and go down to effects composition. We can see the controls for that effect. If we select, for example, this clip, the effect isn't there on this clip, it has been added. And we've got a keyframe at the start. Let's add another keyframe, say where we are right now. We can just click to a add keyframe like that. And what should we do? Let's, for example, change the size to a 47%, always a good number. And we'll move the deer up to the top. We've now got a picture-in-picture a -picture effect. And that'll move between two keyframes. We go back to the first keyframe over there, and it'll move across to a position over there. And now in Caden Live 24, we can click over here, and we've got loads of new easing interpolation modes. Now, admittedly, we still don't have ease in and ease out, which is what I most want, and we don't have a graph editor. But it is good to see that Caden Live is moving towards the implementation of these critical features. Staying with effects, it's now also possible to add an effect to multiple clips at the same time. So if I select multiple clips, which we do by holding down the shift key and dragging like that, I've now got a three clips selected. What should we select? Let's take, for example, charcoal, drag it down to one clip, and it's added to all the clips. It's on the ducks, it's on the deer, and it's on the, uh, on the, on the beach. It's a bit weird, I probably wouldn't use that effect, but you can see the principle. And we can also now turn effects on and off for a clip, either by using the panel over here or by using a toggle on the timeline. We can tick over there and check over there and check over there, and all the effects are gone for mock clips. Oh, and something else to show you is, if we select lots of clips and turn them into a group, let's do that and uh, group the clips, often useful to group clips together, then our move as a, as a block in the timeline. Once you've done that, in the past, you had to ungroup the clips to change what you were doing with those clips. But you don't anymore. You can now hold down Alt, and I can now take a particular part of that group and move it around or edit it, that type of thing, which is a useful thing to be able to do. And so, as we can see, there are a few little things to make life easier here in Caden Live 24, along with the more fundamental underlying technology changes. Caden Live is a great application, particularly if you need to edit video on less powerful hardware. Indeed, recently, I needed to spend a lot of time away from home, with the only computer I had available being my dual-core i5 laptop, and on this computer I used Caden Live to edit a lot of the video content I've posted on this channel in January and February 2024. And this has left me with a deep respect for Caden Live, even though I normally edit in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, which uh, I couldn't run on this laptop. And so, although I've used Caden Live before, I've used it a lot on Raspberry Pi, for example, I've now got an even greater appreciation for it. It really is fantastic free open source software. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,